fuck? What the fuck, man? It's Bigfoot, man. It's fucking Bigfoot. He's here to assault us. I'm being so assaulted right now by Bigfoot. Oh! Bigfoot assaults on the dark sewer network. Oh, welcome to the first episode of Bigfoot Assault. My name is not important, but I am a survivor. I'll be reading stories from other survivors like me. The first story comes from Buster Hyman. My name is Buster Hyman. I'm a 72-year-old retired mailman that lives in Ohio. I was very happy to hear about your show, which I hope will expose Bigfoot for the monster he is. I think sharing my tale will put other survivors at ease. To know that you are not alone can sometimes be the greatest help in recovering from a traumatic experience. My story takes place 30 years ago in 1986. I was camping with my buddy Wade out in Yellowwood State Park south of Indianapolis. He just got married and wanted to escape from his life of incarceration for a night or two, and I suggested we grab a few bottles of the cheapest whiskey we could find and go camping. My grandfather taught me how to camp. So I knew all we needed was some good drink and a blanket or two. We found a nice clearing. We laid out our blankets and got our bottles open. We started drinking and playing a few games of Have You Ever. Wade just asked me if I have ever kissed a man on the lips before when the night of hell started that I wish I was able to forget. As I began to tell him a story about this one time I kissed a boy behind the dumpster of a local IHOP, we heard one of the most frightening howls ever. At first, we shrugged it off. It sounded like a pack of goats that were fighting each other over the last possible mate, and it ended pretty abruptly. At this point, I was up to the part of my story where me and my mystery boy were looking through the dumpster trying to locate a warm, discarded pancake we might be able to cut a small hole into when we heard it again. This time it sounded closer. It scared Wade so much that when he grabbed my thigh it ripped my spandex pants. This night was going south fast. We were too drunk to run, so we decided we could hide under the blankets. With the blankets pulled up over our heads, we began to relax a little. That was until it happened. Something grabbed the blanket from off of us. There we were, two grown men, naked and shivering fearing for our lives. The creature that grabbed the blanket must have been at least nine feet tall. In the moonlight, its fur appeared to be a brownish gray, and its eyes were glowing red. It threw the blanket, but a strong gust of wind somehow blew it into the monster face, and it began to struggle. I was holding Wade by the back of his head so hard now. I was terrified. All I could think of doing was throw my whiskey bottle at its large head. Sadly, I'm terrible at throwing things and completely missed. I heard my weapon shatter on a rock with it. I lost all hope. By this time, Wade was panting and it sounded like he was gargling liquid in his throat. He must have been so scared he began to puke. This is when the unthinkable happened. The monster had freed himself from the blanket that was stuck to his head, gave a blood-curdling raw, and grabbed Wade by his foot. I didn't know what to do. 
and my natural instinct kicked in, and I curled up into a ball and began to cry. I only peeked for a moment, and I saw Bigfoot take Wade by one leg, and he held him upside down in the air. Wade was scratching now at the monster and kicking him, but it seemed to have no effect. Bigfoot then took his other massive claw and grabbed Wade's other leg. I wish the next part did not happen, but it did. Wade was ripped in half. The beast spread his arms, ripping Wade from his taint to his thorax. Blood was sprayed everywhere. I was so horrified, I couldn't move and I closed my eyes again. Rocking in place and gently crying, I whispered prayers pr- I whispered prayers to Thor in hopes he would protect me. Being part Swedish must have helped, because when I woke up the next morning, I was alive. I was able to make it back into town and explain to the police what had happened. I brought them to where it occurred, and they saw the blood, the broken bottle, and the blanket covered in blood. At first, they were going to arrest me, but luckily, thank Thor... The beast had hair stuck to the blanket. They had a scientist from Africa flown in, who did test on the hair. The DNA was not human. It scared everyone so much that they didn't want to report it to the news. It was all covered up. I wasn't even able to tell Wade's wife what had happened. I felt horrible about this day. This experience. This life. I'm so happy you are letting me tell my story. This will truly help me sleep at night and relax my soul. Wade, I love you. And I am sorry I was not able to save you or do more for you or your wife. Bigfoot, fuck you. Tune in next time for more. Only on